My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, just a few days after the Ascension, which is traditionally celebrated on Thursday and many dioceses, in fact, it is celebrated on the seventh Sunday of Easter. So today we have to imagine that the apostles have just seen our Lord taken up into heaven. They didn't have to go through the sorrowful task of burying the body again. He was so luminous, he was so peaceful, so encouraging, so divine, that they felt tremendously encouraged and boosted. Yet now they really felt the weight of the responsibility that was on them. They had to continue really what the Lord had started. His ascension was not the end of the story. Clearly, I mean, they have a deep sense of taking up the baton that our Lord had entrusted to them. And when you take up the baton in a relay race, you have to be running. And then you have to continue really to run like faster than the last guy to win this race. So, of course, we know they go to the obvious place. They go to the cynical. That is where they witness so many intimate conversations with him and how he transmitted to them the exact nature of their mission. And it's really beautiful to read how Luke in the Acts of the Apostles in the first reading, how he writes about this account and how he mentions all the names of the apostles who were there. You know, each one, just like you know that list that we read about in the synoptics when the Lord chooses his disciples or his apostles. Well, they continue to be there present. And that back then was the start. Now, now, well, things are getting really serious. So they're like all very much united and they feel the weight of responsibility. But so they're coming together and they feel the bonds that unite them. The Acts of the Apostles says, in one of the last lines, it says, all these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. So there they are praying, and you could say these supernatural bonds are holding them together. They are bonds that are like the DNA of the early church, is what holds them tightly knit despite their own weaknesses and their own fears. These bonds are not fetters or, or shackles that limit them, but intimate ties that emphasize that they are not alone. They are not isolated verses quoted out of context from a long poem, but they are together like a united hymn of praise to God, continuing our Lord's mandate. And they will be strengthened exponentially when the Holy Spirit comes down on them on the day of Pentecost. And that will really unite them even more. But of course, we too now are part of that communion, that what we call the communion of saints. Because we too, as Christians, must feel these deep bonds that hold us together with one another. The bonds of the communion of saints. And really we have to be deeply aware of these bonds, both because they strengthen us and because we too are able to strengthen others, like strong links in a chain. And we have to really feel that duty to invigorate those around us, and because as soon as any link fails, the rest comes crashing down. And this truth of the communion of saints was mentioned in an audience by Pope Francis back in 2013. He said, this is one of the most consoling truths of our faith, since it reminds us that we are not alone, but that there is a communion of life among all those who belong to Christ. It is a communion, he says, that is born of faith. Indeed, the term saints refers to those who believe in the Lord Jesus and are incorporated by him into the church through baptism. And that is why the first Christians, he says, were also called, quote, saints. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how much he watches uh, popular movies, but he actually, in this same audience, made reference to The Matrix, but in a positive way. Mm 
you remember the movie the, the Matrix? Well, you know, in this movie, the, the Matrix is like this evil network controlled by computers in the world that have kind of taken over the world and they, they create like an alternative u, u, um, universe that is like fictitious to keep this matrix going. But Pope Francis speaks about the matrix of the communion of saints, like, like a good matrix. He says, the church in her most profound truth is communion with God, in, intimacy with God, a communion of love with Christ and with the Father in the Holy Spirit, which extends to brotherly communion. He says, this relationship between Jesus and the Father is the, quote, matrix of the bond between Christians. If we are intimately part of this matrix, this fiery furnace of love, then we can truly become of one single heart and one single soul among us. For God's love burns away our selfishness, our prejudices, our interior and exterior divisions. The love of God even burns away our sins. Isn't that lovely? So, so we, we really have to like take the red pill to understand this truth eh? and that you and I are part of something much bigger than ourselves. And if we only take the blue pill, well, then we stay focused in our own isolation, our own things. And if we take the red pill, we'll be part of that matrix, the good matrix. You probably read uh, Henry Nguyen, this famous uh, Canadian author, and he used to make the distinction between being productive and being fruitful. Now, our society places a lot of importance on productivity. You know, like the idea of leaving a legacy, cranking out a certain amount of widgets. And to be productive, he says, frees us from the fear of somehow ending up useless. Eh? And a lot of people really fear being use useless. But fruitfulness, well, that's different. It's not as visible. It kind of goes unnoticed, but it is much richer. Fruit fruitfulness is, is like hidden, eh? like, like the fruit in a soul that comes from a deep interior life and is able to support others. After all, God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. And you and I are fruitful when we become aware of those bonds that really link us together. I mean, they say the communion of saints is like the LinkedIn of the spiritual life. You know, when somebody gets a job, you can send them a little message of congratulations. And, uh, well, in the spiritual life, we can send them a mortification, we can send them a prayer. This is a task that we must undertake. Because a mature person is aware of the bonds that tie him to others. He is aware. You know, like when he wakes up in the morning, he thinks of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who must be so tired and exhausted in Rome, you know, who has really the greatest weight that one could have in this world in terms of a job and a responsibility. And so you say, okay, I'm getting up right away and I'm going to offer that. Mm. Or maybe when he starts a work that he has to do, like an unpleasant job, he can offer that for a relative, I don't know, who's going to go undergo surgery. Or maybe a, a young group of priests that has just been ordained. Mm. Or that friend who was discouraged after losing his job. Mm. We can think, I am connected to them. My little prayer can be fruitful to those who really need it the most. And of course, in the Gospel of today, it recounts this beautiful passage from, from John, how all the energy of the early Christians, of those apostles, came from the prayer of Jesus himself in the cynical that he had addressed to the Father. When he says, now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you, for I have given them the teaching that you gave to me, and they have truly accepted this, that I came from you and have believed that it was you who sent me. He says, I, I pray for them. I mean, that's, that's a, a serious bond. And, and the Christian vocation is really a call from God to enter into that fruitfulness. 
that glorification that the Lord speaks about, that dynamic that can only be powered by the love of God. Right? Let's ask to enter into this dynamism of the communion of saints that we saw there in the early church, right? and the Lord wants us to continue this legacy. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.